We've all heard it before. The chlorine and chloramine lurking in our tap water is bad for our houseplants. This has driven many houseplant owners to spend money on fancy filters, tap water conditioners, and sometimes even complete reverse osmosis systems to try and remove these substances from their tap water. Well, what if I told you it was all a myth? Last year, I mentioned in my Fertilizer 101 video that chlorine is actually essential to plant survival, and that shocked a lot of you. What? Now, while chlorine is not one of the essential plant macronutrients, it is one of the essential plant micronutrients, meaning that plants do need a small amount of chlorine to survive and thrive. In your plants, chlorine helps to maintain leaf turgor, which is how firm a leaf is, it helps to regulate respiration in your plants by opening and closing the stomata on the leaves. It aids in the transportation of magnesium, calcium, and potassium within your plant, and it increases water and nitrogen use efficiency. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Budria, if plants need chlorine to survive, how did this myth even get started in the first place? Well, the origins of this myth are not entirely clear, but it likely stems from several misconceptions. The first misconception is that chlorine, which kills harmful bacteria in water, will also significantly harm beneficial microbes in soil, thus negatively impacting your plant. However, in one study, researchers applied highly chlorinated water to soil for 126 days, and when I say highly chlorinated, I mean much, much, much higher than the level of chlorine that is in your regular tap water. And what they discovered was that after two days of not treating the soil with that highly chlorinated water, the levels of microorganisms in the soil had returned to pre-treatment levels at all depths of the soil. And in another study, researchers found that water chlorinated at five parts per million killed organisms only in the top half inch of soil, while organisms deeper than one half inch continued to thrive. The second misconception likely has to do with a misunderstanding of the various forms and types of chlorine, because not all forms and types are safe for plants or people, but naturally the forms that are being put into drinking water are considered safe. Now, the third misconception has to do with how high the levels of chlorine and chloramine are in tap water versus how high the levels actually have to be to be overkill and become harmful to our plants. So let's start with what the maximum allowed levels of chlorine and chloramine are in tap water. The CDC states that tap water should contain under four parts per million of chlorine and under four parts per million of chloramine. And if you're not certain about the tap water in your area, you can look at your city's water quality report, which should be available on their website. So just how much chlorine and chloramine have to be in our tap water for it to be dangerous for our plants? Well, according to the University of Massachusetts Amherst Center for Agriculture, the level of chlorine residuals, and chlorine residuals includes both chlorine and chloramine, they state that for ornamental plants, the acceptable levels are less than 140 parts per million. Which means that at a bare minimum, your tap water is 136 parts per million less than the amount that would harm your plants. And I say minimum because when I actually checked my own city's website, over the course of 2023, the average parts per million for chlorine residuals in the tap water here was only 2.55 parts per million. And since I know someone out there is probably curious about the addition of fluoride to some tap water, the CDC states that tap water should have 0.7 parts per million of fluoride, and researchers state that in order to be safe for plants, the levels of fluoride in tap water should be below 0.75 parts per million. Which means as long as your city is following the recommended guidelines, then your tap water should be safe for your plants. Though it is important to point out here that some plants can be more sensitive to fluoride than others. So given this information on the level of chlorine residuals required in your tap water to cause harm to your plants, it's actually way more likely for your plants to experience a chlorine deficiency than to experience chlorine toxicity. And interestingly enough, these signs and symptoms of chlorine deficiency are almost identical to chlorine toxicity, which also could account for how this myth got started in the first place. It's possible people were just mistaking what was actually a chlorine deficiency in their plants as chlorine overkill. And as it goes with many plant-related issues, the signs and symptoms of a chlorine imbalance can be caused by a variety of other things, all of which are more likely than a chlorine imbalance. 
which is why I will not be covering the signs and symptoms of a chlorine imbalance in this video. I don't want to be sending anyone into an unnecessary frenzy thinking they have a chlorine issue when it's actually something else. But if you're still finding it difficult to believe in the face of all of this scientific evidence that this is all just some great myth, perhaps you'll take the word of horticulturist Justin Hancock, who works for one of the largest plant growers there is, Costa Farms. Justin has been quoted as saying, chlorine has a reputation for harming houseplants, but it's largely a myth. And he goes on to explain exactly as I just have, that in most cities, the amount of chlorine used in tap water is far below the threshold for causing plant damage. And if Justin's statements still don't convince you it's all a myth, then maybe your grandparents or even your parents will convince you. I mean, think about it. When you were growing up, do you ever remember your grandparents or your parents watering their houseplants with anything other than tap water? My mother has a houseplant that's older than me, which means it's minimum 44 years old, and she has never watered that plant with anything but tap water. Yet that plant is still alive and thriving. And if I'm being honest with you, she's never fertilized that plant in 44 plus years either, yet it is still alive and thriving. And for anybody who might be wondering if chlorine and chloramine were even in use back then, yes, they were. Chlorine has been in use since the early 1900s and chloramine has been in use since 1929. Now I do want to take a moment to remind you guys that not all water is created equal. So our horticulturist from Costa Farms, Justin Hancock, has also been quoted as stating that a bigger issue might be the hardness or softness of your water. And this is because softened water is typically treated with sodium, which over time can accumulate in your plant soil and lead to wilted foliage and stunted plant growth. But it's those salts and not the chlorine or chloramine that's the issue. Now, in general, salts and mineral buildup in the soil over time is going to be the bigger issue at play when choosing what type of water to water your plants with. But it still isn't really a huge issue when it comes to tap water, depending on your fertilizing habits. So back to my mother's plant that she's never fertilized. Obviously, the buildup of salts and minerals from the tap water have not been significant enough to cause an issue with the plant. Now, she does also repot this plant once every few years, which will help out with any kind of buildup as well by giving the plant a soil refresh. However, if she was using a fertilizer on say a once per month basis, then the levels of salt and mineral buildup would be greater. And this is because of the added salts contained within the fertilizer itself. And if she was like a lot of houseplant owners out there today who fertilize with every single watering, then the buildup levels of those salts and minerals would be even greater. Plus, when you fertilize with every single watering, your plant is never getting a flush with plain water, which can help reduce buildup levels of salts and minerals in the soil. So if you're noticing a difference in your plants when you water with unfiltered, untreated tap water versus if you're watering with filtered or treated tap water or even distilled water or rainwater or reverse osmosis water, it is likely related to the buildup of salts and minerals from your fertilization habits in combination with the level of salts and minerals in your tap water. But once again, it has absolutely nothing to do with the levels of chlorine or chloramine in your tap water. But if you still aren't convinced it's all a myth, 11 months ago, I decided to put my money where my mouth is as the saying goes. Remember this moment from my fall favorites video? Oh, I have a water secret I have not told you guys. Well, the big secret is that 11 months ago, I switched from watering all of my plants with filtered water to watering all of my plants with unfiltered, untreated tap water. And yes, I said all of my plants. Now, during this time, I did continue my regular fertilization methods, which basically involve fertilizing every second watering in the spring and summer and every fourth watering in the fall and winter. So for a plant that gets watered, for example, once a week, that means that during the spring and summer, it was getting watered with fertilizer twice a month. And in the fall and winter, it was getting watered with fertilizer once a month. And I am happy to report you guys that I have seen no detrimental changes whatsoever in my plants not even with my Calathea. But if you don't believe me, you can check out my full houseplant tour that I recently did, because in this video, I show you what all of these plants looked like in January of 2024 versus what they looked like in January of 2025 after only having been watered with unfiltered, untreated tap water for 11 months. 
But I hope you guys have learned something today and enjoyed this video. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!